Hi there. It's me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So let's just talk about it seven months today. Time of recording this, it's quarter past five in the evening. So seven months ago today, by this point, I would have had the TPA. I would have been off emerge on the ICU. Um... Probably still had Mary, my day nurse at this point, waiting for a shift change to get Mackie, my night nurse. Uh, and still, at this point, seven months ago today, scared relatively shitless. Just absolutely just buggered. Yeah, not a good time. But let's just talk about the last seven months. So about, I have a memory gap of about, Two, two and a half weeks before my stroke, I really don't remember. Um, unless it was something that I posted on Facebook, uh, or it was something I, you know, had someone remind me of, I still really don't have a direct memory of it. You know, I don't remember things at times. Like, for example, a couple days before my stroke, I had an interview at a promotion that, that I didn't get. Had nothing to do with the stroke, I just wasn't the right candidate. Uh, about a week and a half before that, I had the interview for that job, which I don't remember. Uh, so that's a bit of a thing where like, I, I know things happen, but I just don't remember the thing. And then about two weeks after the stroke, again, I still don't remember most of that. Um, again, unless it's something that happened that I posted to Facebook or it was something ridiculously funny or difficult that someone's reminded me of, I don't really remember much of it. There's certain things I can, but not a lot. Um, is that a byproduct of my brain healing and just the amount of sleep and fatigue I had? I have no idea. I just know I can't remember it. So today I started week one, no, sorry, day one, week four um, of uh, my return to work. So things are going well. I got to see Michaela, my therapist, uh, counselor uh, for the first time in a little while then that was brilliant she is an amazing lady I, I can't say enough good things about her right so I notice I'm up to 54 subscribers thank you for those of you that have been a subscriber from whatever point <clears throat> beginning or not again I'd like to thank you all for joining this little party um, and just being part of this merry little band of stroke folk for those of you that aren't subscribed but you're still watching my content again thank you um, I'd encourage you to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be doing some videos. I'm going to do one on uh, your rights as a patient. So like, let's say you seek out mental health help or help from someone. What are your rights as a patient or even a potential patient? Um, I'm going to do one, uh, a new one on relationships after stroke. Um, I'm going to do a couple others, right? I'm working on some content. I'm still learning how to edit. That still is difficult for me to figure out. Unfortunately, the programs are not all that, not all that intuitive. So it's been seven months. I've made a lot of transitions. I went from the hospital to home, home to outpatient rehab, outpatient rehab to no rehab, you know. Um, I went about five months without sleeping properly and I mean five months maybe averaging three hours of sleep a night if I was lucky being constantly exhausted started a new medication in November and that is working amazing it's been two months I've been on that medication and I I can't say enough good things about it I just legitimately cannot say enough good things about it I might do a video on the medication I just don't want to violate YouTube's terms of service, so I understand they've updated those policies recently, and I don't want to come afoul of those. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I don't. I know my experience post-stroke may not be similar to other people's, right? because no two strokes are the same, no two people are the same. I appreciate that I. I'm ridiculously lucky. I was having a conversation with a really good friend at work about my stroke. 
and how everything just sort of fell into place that day. Like, the ambulance was just there within two to three minutes. I was in the ambulance two to three minutes later. I was in the hospital 10 minutes after that, you know. Um, I got the T I saw the neurologist first thing right off the AM. Um, I had the TPA within 10, 15 minutes after that, you know, like everything just fell into place. Like, like I say, have, have I, if I was to be a believer in religious mythology, I would have to say that there was some divine intervention that day. I, I can't speak to that in specific because I'm not, I'm just lucky. Um, has the stroke had its challenges? Oh yeah, it, it definitively has. Making the transition now and back to work, right? And that, that's a fairly significant transition. And I appreciate that there are people that have had a stroke that will never be able to make that transition. Right? I also appreciate that I have significant hurdles due to my transition that I'm going to have to overcome just to be able to be as successful as I was before my stroke. You know, I'm an A-type personality. I'm fairly driven, fairly determined. Before my stroke, I was in the top 10% of all employees for over two years. Right? Now, I have to fight to get back to where I was. And I appreciate that I'm going to have to be twice as good on a bad day as I ever was on a good day before. And that's just a reality. I have to accept the other realities. Um, and it's not that I live in fear, right? It's not that I live in waiting for a shoe to drop. It's not that I live, you know, trying to modify my life because of the dictates of what may happen. Because these are all mays. I may develop a seizure disorder. Okay. I may develop dementia. I may develop Alzheimer's. I may develop, like, there are so many mays that could happen in my future specifically in the next 18 months, I can't, I can't live like that. I can't live in fear of like, oh, I may get this or this may happen or that may happen. Well, if it happens, it happens and I'll deal with it, with it, with it then. But I'm not going out, you know, modifying my life, changing how I intend to live. So I'm living either in constant anticipation or just downright fear of, will I get dementia? Okay, when might that happen? Will I get Alzheimer's? May that might happen. Will I develop seizures? Well, when might that happen? You know, what if I have a massive setback? You know, like, what if the aphasia comes back and it doesn't go away? Because that is a reality. That These are things, when you've had a stroke, you, have, you just have to accept the fact that your life now may, and I say may, may have limitations. Then again, it's not a shall. It's not a will. It's a may. I don't, I don't, I don't intend to live in fear of... When might, could, maybe, should, possibly, will happen in a week, or not, or in a year, or not. I, I choose not to live in fear, so I try to live pretty much the same way I did before, except for no smoking, right? Um, used to go out with the mates from work every couple of weeks for drinks after work, and, you know, have six or seven beers after work. Well, that'll never happen again. I... I'm allowed three beers a day to three beers a day to fourteen beers a week. Right, I'm now on a permanent beer ration plan. And really, it's probably never going to happen. I might go for the odd beer now and again, but you know, hanging out till the wee hours of the morning, commiserating, you know, with, with workmates, probably not. Might not be a reality ever again. Um, you know, I'm going back to the gym, you know, I'm trying to get myself back into a semblance of better shape, but that's having beneficial side effects. So I have a balance and proprioception issue. I still get a bit wonky with balance, but I'm doing exercises in the gym that revolve around free weights and balance to try to rebuild that. Uh, I'm journaling while I'm doing my return to work because I want to be able to try to draw the inferences, draw the connections. Partly so if I go back to see my counselor again, I can have some notes to rely upon like this happened. Also, I'm trying to draw the conclusions for myself because I, I appreciate at some point the training wheels for this entire stroke rehab come off and it's just going to be me. 
And I want to be realistic when it comes down to that point where it's just going to be me. Where I've equipped myself appropriately so that when it comes time to carry on, I'm, I'm pretty much good to go. I don't have to call for help, right? And then other beneficial side effects from the stroke is you, you really get to learn who you can trust, right? Downfall of that is, is you get to really learn who's a fucking asshole and just isn't worth your time at all. Hard stop, right? That is that is the downfall of the stroke. You, you really learn who's in your corner, who's not in your corner. Um, and then there are a few people that are kind of, you know, still feeling you out to see how you are. It is what it is. No big deal. Right? I, uh, I don't lose a lot of sleep about the people that I've had to cut out or that just are useless. Fun fact, you didn't know they were truly useless until you had your stroke. After the stroke, you were able to determine they're fucking useless. So you just get rid of them. They're driftwood. You don't need them. Um, and that's about how that party, that's about how that party will play out. Someone asked me, are you sorry you had your stroke? I was like, well, no. And then they asked me, why would you say that? Well, it's like, cause I don't know any different. Right. I don't know what would have happened on the 21st of June if I didn't have my stroke. So I can't play the paradox game. Right? I can't play the game of, well, this would have happened and that would have happened and this could have happened and that would have happened. Sure. Uh, professionally, I missed some opportunities. Right? There's some opportunities I missed. So what? Who's to say they would have been my opportunities to begin with? Right? Who's to say if it was my opportunity, it would have gone the way I would have liked it to? Who's to say if it was my opportunity... That would still be my opportunity today. Okay. So I'm not about to play the paradox game. Like, Sure, there are things I missed out on. I accept that. For example, I was supposed to be at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas today. Right? I had planned to be at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas for today. I can't, I can't I'm, not, I'm not insurable to travel. So there's no way I'm going from Canada to the U.S., just for the SHOT Show, as much fun as that be. Last year, went to the SHOT Show, stayed at the Lux, had a great time, won a bit of money in Vegas, not a lot of money, but 150 bucks. Um, had a great time with the friends I went down with. So, am I sad I missed the SHOT Show this year? Yes. Am I sorry I missed it? No. Because the reality is, me in a room of 7,000 people, not a good idea. <laughs> no. No. Even if I was to go to the SHOT Show right now, there's no guarantee I would enjoy myself. Like, even if I went to the SHOT Show today, there's no guarantee that I wouldn't, you know, just be mentally ruined after three hours on the SHOT Show and then curled up in my room in the hotel for the next seven hours. Right? So, again, I'm not going to play the shit of wood again. It's just not going to happen because, again, I can't count on the things that are not going to happen. Right? So I'm not sorry the stroke happened because that implies a sense of regret. And I'm not about to regret some of the experiences I've had because they've been rather rewarding. And I'm not about to regret things that could have happened but never did and possibly never will. So I can't regret those things because they didn't happen and they may never happen. And if they are going to happen, it's going to be part of my future and not of my past. So I'm not going to get regretful for things that are in my past but never actually happened in my past. So I never got that opportunity, so I'm not going to be sorry about it. Am I am I remorseful that I didn't get to do some of the things that I intended to do during the summer? Um, and then, yeah, am I kind of pissed off that I didn't get to the SHOT Show? Yes. Am I kind of pissed off that I got to spend almost most of my summer in bed? Yes. You know, um, or at appointments, or in rehab, or in confusion, or whatever. So... Yeah, I'm kind of pissed off about that. But, again, who wouldn't be? Like, had I broke my leg, right, and I had activities planned where I had to be in a cast 
for, you know, say three months and I wasn't allowed to do anything because there was surgery involved and whatnot, yeah, I'd be a bit remorseful, pissed off that I, there's things I didn't get to do. But again, it's a health concern, right? There's just no way I could have conceivably, realistically participated in that event. So, I'm not sorry this joke happened. I'm, I am, I'm at odds with that statement. I really am. I'm sorry I had a stroke. Yeah, it, it fucking sucks. Am I about to curl up into a blanket and have a pity party? No. Yeah. There's been some significant beneficial side effects to this, the chicanery of, uh, you know, my brain trying to kill me. So, ultimately, it hasn't been a completely negative experience. No, it, it's been rewarding in some ways. You get to redefine yourself in some ways. You get to, you know, you get to find out who's really in your corner and, and who really actually has your back and who's just a fucking waste of skin. You get to, you know, hey, I got to have the summer off, which included my birthday, which I was able to roll into Christmas off because I had my stroke at work. No one really complained that, you know, you needed six months off. So I, I got a six-month vacation, didn't incur a vacation day, which a vacation where I went nowhere except to bed. <laughs> Occasionally the beach, um, you know, and, you know, spent a couple nights with friends having dinner and whatnot. So the last seven months have been very challenging. The last seven months have been very difficult. The last seven months have been very rewarding as well. So there's not, there can be hope after a stroke. And I appreciate my recovery timelines may not be the same as everyone else's recovery timeline. So I'm, I'm going to encourage those that have had a stroke, please do not use my benchmarks as your benchmarks because they will be different because the damage or difficulties or deficits that I've had due to my stroke will be different than yours. So please do not use my progression as a benchmark for you. That's just, you know, just the thing, right? Don't, don't use what I've done as a direct model for you. But ultimately, seven months since my stroke, I have to recognize that. Um, you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, you get to learn a lot about yourself. You get to learn a lot about people around you. You get to learn a lot about the relationships you have. There's a lot of things you can learn because of your stroke. And it's not all bad. It really is. It's, it's not all bad. Um, on, on that note, if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, someone's going through you know, the post-stroke recovery, either it's yourself or a family member, please recommend the channel to them. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If there's a, a, a topic you want to see me cover, please uh, email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And as long as it's germane to the channel and it's sort of core concepts, I'll happily do a, a thing on that. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being someone immediately appears befuddled or confused. Uh, they're having vision problems. They are having facial droop. They are unable to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. They're having speech issues, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They're unable to stand unaided. You know, they can't bear their own body weight. They have general body weakness or weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.